Okay, so we're looking at a new probability technique called the addition rule of probability. So um, before we start the addition rule of probability, I want to focus on the key words because it's one thing to know how to apply the addition rule of probability, but it's a whole another thing to recognize when you read a problem that that's the probability you're dealing with. That's really fundamental. If you don't know what you're dealing with, there's no way to solve the problem. So when I read this problem, for example, it says find the probability. So first thing I identify is that, oh, it's asking me about probability. That's clear. Okay, so find the probability that A, that implies just one thing, a randomly selected ball will have an even number on it or be blue. So what I want to focus on here is a couple of things. First of all, it's a probability problem. That's clear. And then these two things are the next things that I really want to pay attention to. A randomly selected item or a randomly selected ball, just one thing being selected from the group, right? So we have a box of balls here drawn on the board. Somebody's going to reach in, grab one randomly, and uh, look at it and look at their result. And so we're looking for the probability that that ball that they select is either an even-numbered ball or it has the color blue. This word or is important. If they didn't have this other possibility, this other possibility in the problem, if it just said find the probability that a randomly selected ball had an even number on it, period, if that was the end of the problem, it would just be basic probability. We would set up a fraction representing the number of even-numbered balls divided by the total number of balls in the box, and then we'd have our solution. In this problem, though, we have this word or, which is allowing for this one thing. It'll be acceptable if it's an even-numbered ball or if it's blue. So it can turn out either this way or some other way. Any problem that has one randomly selected item and the word or involved in it, and it's a probability question, is going to be clearly an addition rule of probability problem. So that's how you're going to identify on the exams or in the homeworks that you're working with addition rule. Looking for the fact that it's asking you for probability, you're taking only one item, and you have this word or in the problem. A meaningful or. You know, sometimes the word or is used differently in the English language, but here it's clear that we're saying that this outcome can either be a ball that has an even number on it, or it's a ball that's blue. So two possible ways the problem can turn out to be a success. Okay, so now that we know it's addition rule of probability, the next question is how do we actually go about solving a problem like this? Well, the generic formula for addition rule of probability is written as the probability of A or B. Sometimes you see the union symbol in place of the word or. All right, but either way, A or B is then expressed as three fractions. The probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And this end is sometimes expressed as an intersection symbol from set theory. Okay, so for us, what we want to do is to, you know, set up our problem above according to this structure, where the A will be the even number. So the probability of an even number or the B will be blue, right? So our first fraction would represent, let's actually write it out. So we're going to say the probability of even or blue. So our probability of A, the probability of the first thing, is going to be the probability of an even number. So it would be the probability that we get an even value. Plus the probability of B. For us, that's going to be the probability of blue. The probability that we get a blue ball, a ball that's painted blue or has a blue number on it, right? Minus the probability of. And for this category, what you want to do is blend these two things together in a meaningful way. So try to say something like an even-numbered ball that's blue, right? An even-numbered ball that's blue. An even-numbered blue ball. Okay. So now you've joined them together because that's what this category is. It's the intersection. It's where they overlap. It's where they're the same. The issue here at hand is that you don't want to end up counting something twice because that'll kind of inflate the probability. So we subtract off the things that would have been counted twice. So it's like if I said you know, to these uh, balls above if they were actually objects that could respond and, and answer, you know, the way I would figure out the probability of even is I'd say, you know, okay, let me count up the even number of balls. So I'd say if they were people, I'd say, oh, raise your hand if you have an even number painted on you. So they'd all raise their hand and I'd count up how many evens I had divided by the total, of course, right? And the next fraction, I would say, okay, now uh, put your hands down from before and raise your hand if you have a blue painted on you, right? 
So all the blue numbered balls would raise their hand, and then I'd divide by the total. The problem is that some of these guys would have raised their hand twice, right? The four would have been counted both for the even category and for the blue category. The six would have been counted for even and blue. The eight would have been counted for even and blue. And so those balls there would be counted twice in effect. And that's going to inflate the probability. Because there is only one ball here to grab, potentially. But I would have counted it twice as if there were two different balls there to grab. So it would inflate the probability, make it larger than it should. So what I do to fix that is I subtract off anybody that would have been counted twice. An even numbered ball, blue ball, would be counted twice. I know that based on the structure before. So I'm going to subtract off the number of even numbered blue balls that I find so that I'm left with you know, just a single counting of each one of these things. Now, of course, if it was a human doing this problem, instead of having to write a generic formula to solve all problems, we'd just say, well, obviously, don't count things twice. You know, you know, if you knew you counted the four when you said even numbers, the six and the eight, if you knew they were counted already for even numbers, you wouldn't count them separately again for blue balls. But how do you say that in a formula? Well, this is how you do that in a formula. You have to subtract off the things you counted twice. That's the most efficient way to do it. OK, so there it is. Now I have the statement. Now how do we go out about finishing it? Well, here's where basic probability comes in. Basic probability is used to solve each individual little fraction. So every little fraction from here on out will be solved simply by using basic probability. And so that's something we should be pretty good at at this point. To do it in a formal way, we'd say what? Number of even balls, right, over the total plus number of blue over the total. And then lastly, this one is going to be number of even slash blue over the total. OK, so I've kind of shorthanded this, but we have the writing up here to remember what that means, right? So even numbered balls that are blue. OK, let's fill in those fractions now. I'm going to need a little space, so I'm going to erase some of this just to fill in the fractions now. OK, so for this first fraction, let's get the number of even balls over the total. How many balls here are even? One, two, three, four of them. Four of those numbers are even. How many total balls? Well, they're numbered one to nine, so there are nine actual balls there. If you count them up, there are nine. So four ninths. A um, little heads up here for addition rules. Since you're actually only taking one item, all these denominators should be the same. So if you decide that the first fraction has a denominator of 9, they'll all be a denominator of 9. In the addition rule, that's always true. So you don't have to worry about adjusting the denominators or anything. If you find that one of the denominators is 9, they're all going to be 9. Right? If one of the denominators is 10, they'll all be 10. Right? OK, so for the next fraction, I need to have the number of blue over the total. Well, of these 9 balls, how many of them are blue? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. 6 were blue. And then lastly, we need to count the number of even numbered balls that were also blue. OK, so one, two, three. Three of those guys were both even and blue. And then from there, we just do the arithmetic to finish the problem. Um, four plus six, of course, makes 10. 10 take away three is seven. The answer becomes 7 ninths as a fraction, or 0.7 repeating as a decimal. And that's your solution.